We now know that the Germans were ahead of the Allies in most military technology during World War II, and in particular in the air. During World War II, the Germans had, incredibly, several helicopters in service, including a large, heavy-lift twin-rotor version that would set an important world record. Although the helicopter was invented by the French in the early 20th century, the practical helicopters that could be used by the military were developed in Germany in the 1930s. The first practical functional helicopter was the Focke-Wulf FW61, which first flew in 1936. It set several records for altitude, speed and flight duration. The Fokker Achgelis company initially built an enlarged version of the FW61, the FA226 Horniser or Hornet, while working closely with BMW to perfect engine and rotors. The helicopter that was to be the most important of World War II, the Draxa or Dragon, the FA-223, first flew in 1940. It had twin rotors, a fully enclosed cabin and loading bay, and a single powerful BMW engine. After rectifying many problems, subsequent FA-223s entered production in 1942, the first mass-produced helicopter but due to Allied bombing destroying the factory, delays to production meant that only 20 FA-223s were actually built and flew, out of an order for an astounding 400 machines per month. Nevertheless, these aircraft were revolutionary. The FA-223 could lift sizable loads, including on one occasion an entire Fiesler Storch reconnaissance plane. It was fitted with a winch and a special quick-release electric cargo hook. Two were assigned to the snow-covered Alps near Innsbruck in Austria, where the Dragons moved troops, artillery guns and other loads, landing at altitudes of up to 5,000 feet or 1,600 meters above sea level. It is clear that if the Germans had got their act together and mass-produced the Dragon, the impact on warfare would have been immense. But fortunately for the Allies, this was not to be. In early 1945, with the war nearly over, three workable dragons were turned over to the Luftwaffe at Muldorf in Bavaria to form the world's first helicopter squadron, Transportstaffel 40. The unit also had some Flettner FL-282 small helicopters, another successful German design. The unit retreated into Austria, acting as artillery spotters, liaison and transports from Einring airfield. Several, including airframe V-14, were captured by the U.S. 80th Infantry Division at the end of the war. V-14 was already a record breaker. This particular helicopter had completed 170 hours flying time, the most in the world at that time. The United States wanted to transport two Dragons back to the States for evaluation, but in the event there was space for only one aboard the ship. V-14 was surplus and was going to be destroyed, but the British complained and the aircraft was turned over to them for evaluation. On the 25th of July 1944, V-14 was flown by its original Luftwaffe pilot, Oberleutnant Gerstenhauer, to Cherbourg on the French coast. Aboard was squadron leader Cable of the Royal Air Force and Lieutenant Bullvide of the United States Naval Reserve. The British consulted with Gerstenhauer about how to get the Dragon back to the UK, and the pilot offered to fly the machine across the English Channel. No helicopter had made an open water crossing before. The Dragon would cross the Channel at one of its wider points to deliver the aircraft to RAF Bewley in Hampshire. The distance was 125 miles or 200 kilometers. And so, on the 6th of September 1945, in a flight as significant as Louis Blériot's 1909 first crossing of the English Channel in a fixed-wing aircraft, Gerstenhauer, with two RAF observers, flew the Dragon to England without incident, proving again just how advanced and well-built the Dragon was. Unfortunately, you can't see V-14 on display at any of the excellent aircraft museums in the UK, as it was written off in a heavy landing accident in October 1945 and the airframe subsequently scrapped, a fate that befell all of the FA-223 Dragons that survived the war. 
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and also help support my channel, PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.